Welcome to the course on transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. We have come uh, to the 60th lecture or the last lecture of this uh, course and uh, we in this uh, lecture we would be covering the remaining portion of our discussion which were uh, talking about the applications of organometallic compounds uh, in biology and then provide a overall summary uh, uh, of the topics that has been covered uh, in this course. Now, in the last lecture we have looked into the scope of applications of this newly evolving applications of organometallics in biology and which is sort of uh, uh, now defined as the field of bio organometallic chemistry and uh, we have looked into the scope in terms of applications of these compounds in biology and uh, um, uh, also uh, we have started the discussion by the uh, by looking into molecules organometallic molecules that are present in nature and the discussion started off with two molecules uh, two vitamin molecules to be more precise vitamin B12 uh, uh, can that contains a uh, cobalt uh, carbon bond in terms of methyl cobalamin as well as in terms of another uh, coenzyme B12 which is also derived from uh, uh, vitamin B12. We have uh, looked uh, given a detailed uh, description of the structures showing the presence of organometallic compound. Now proceeding further uh, we are going to talk about another interesting enzyme uh, which is called methyl coenzyme M reductase or popularly known as MCR. Uh, now uh, this MCR functions uh, via intermediate that uh, is supposedly uh, be proceeding by the formation of a nickel methyl bond. So, that is why uh, the organometallic connection. So, MCR has a, a prosthetic group of uh, the uh, coenzyme NCR with a coenzyme converts uh, and the function of the MCR is that uh, it con uh, converts a, a methyl thioether uh, which is a, a coenzyme M and a thiol. The reactants are thioether and the thiol and the product is methane and a heterodisulfide of coenzyme A and B. And what is important the bioorganometallic connection over here is a key in intermediate containing a nickel methyl is uh, uh, supposed to be forming in the methanogenesis uh, or methane production by this enzyme. So, let me uh, show it further for example, uh, this is the thiol uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, spoken about the thiol is of coenzyme B and this is the thioether which is uh, uh, of uh, uh, methyl coenzyme M. Uh, now, these two react in presence of an enzyme called MCR uh, to produce what is called methane and this heterodisulfide. This MCR uses a cofactor uh, which is called coenzyme 450 and the cofactor contains uh, a big uh, organic uh, group as is shown over here and inside it is a, a nickel uh, uh, in plus 1 oxidation state. Uh, uh, so, uh, this uh, has been reported uh, very recently in, uh, in uh, Nature uh, 2010 uh, pay, uh, volume 465-606-608 and request the reader look up to get more knowledge about this particular enzyme. So, uh, this uh, uh, enzyme uh, converts uh, uh, this thioether and thiol to the isulfide along with formation of methane. Methane is formed from this methyl and this hydrogen uh, to give this uh, methane. So, these are uh, methane producing uh, 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 enzyme and uh, it goes through a, a organometallic intermediate which is shown over here. So, for example, this is the uh, cofactor uh, uh, which contain nickel 1 and this is uh, the thiol coenzyme B as well as uh, the thioether. Uh, so, nickel sort of uh, gives electron uh, 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 and gets oxidized to nickel 3 uh, and uh, it forms a nickel methyl bond uh, and this uh, uh, thio, uh, uh, thi the thiol gets deprotonated and the proton uh, is then uh, subsequently uh, absorbed on the um, uh, uh, thiol coenzyme M uh, which is shown over here. Uh, and then there is an electron transfer that occurs uh, from the thiol uh, to nickel 3 and nickel become nickel 2 and what you have over here is a radical cation, uh, radical cation 
and, and the nickel 2 species uh, with the anion in coenzyme B thiolate. Uh, so, uh, now this uh, the uh, methane attacks uh, uh, this hydrogen to gelim, uh, eliminate uh, methane and in process uh, uh, this uh, radical cation uh, is attacked by the anion uh, which is shown over here and as a result uh, the formation of a uh, um, uh, radical anion is observed with uh, nickel 2 and finally, uh, the electron transfer uh, reduction of nickel 2 back to nickel 1 happens with the elimination of heterodisulfide. So, this is a interesting very nice example and the organometallic connection is the proposed uh, uh, nickel uh, uh, methyl uh, bond uh, which has been uh, 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 which has been uh, suggested uh, 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 to uh, occur. So, this nickel uh, uh, methyl species is something uh, uh, which uh, uh, is formed uh, in the production of methane uh, in this uh, uh, enzyme by this enzyme MCR which contains a, a cofactor uh, um, uh, coenzyme F420. So, uh, uh, this is another enzyme uh, uh, whose intermediate is uh, uh, nickel methyl uh, bond. Uh, so, uh, mm, uh, we are going to now move on and uh, move into another important uh, compounds. These are organo uh, arsenic compounds. Uh, there is a, a drug called as uh, arsephenamine uh, uh, or, uh, or uh, salversan. This is a drug for in, uh, treatment of syphilis uh, and uh, trimphonosomiasis. Uh, uh, this is the first uh, organ, uh, this organic also is the first modern chemotherapy ag agent. So, organometallic being used for pharmaceutical property uh, is this is the first example synthesized in 1907 by Paul Elric's lab uh, and then anti uh, syphilitic activity was discovered uh, in 1909. Uh, so, now let us take a look at this molecule initially was thought to uh, have uh, uh, arsenic arsenic bond. Uh, but later on the structure was uh, proven to be incorrect and the correct uh, structure is supposed to be containing a arsenic arsenic single bond uh, uh, in a 3 membered or 5 membered trimer or pentamer and uh, this uh, uh, arsenophenamine is supposed to be a mixture of uh, these two structures 2 and 3. So, this is another uh, organometallic compound which has direct metal carbon bond and are uh, being used. Uh, 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 in uh, uh, medicinal uh, purpose. So, we move on uh, uh, to another interesting arsenic compound which is uh, um, uh, over uh, here. It is a ar arsenic organometallic compound uh, 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 which contain a bond, but this was used for negative purpose actually used uh, as a poison gas uh, in the first world war and uh, these contains uh, these are lung irritant and contains uh, uh, like you know for, uh, leads to blister formation and then uh, but the, this is also uh, used as a poison organometallic compound being used as a poison. So, this is this arsenic compound uh, and then uh, as a remedy uh, or antidote to this uh, this uh, um, ligand uh, uh, which has uh, this di di dithiol ligands were uh, uh, developed uh, uh, um, as an antidote. Uh, uh, to get relief uh, from this uh, arsenic uh, poison gas uh, which was uh, done in world war. So, here we see the applications uh, some uh, benign uh, some good and some bad applications of organometallic compounds. Uh, another use of organometallic compounds is with mercury. Mm. Uh, uh, so, these are organometallic mercury compounds which are despite being top toxics uh, they have been used uh, since in medicine since ancient time and here are uh, two uh, uh, mercury compounds which mercurochrome and mercurothiolate. Uh, uh, these are organometallic compounds uh, which contains a uh, metal uh, um, carbon bond uh, 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 over here and they are used as local mild antiseptics. So, here we see a, a organometallic compounds of mercury being used for anti uh, uh, septic uh, uh, purpose. Uh, so, um, uh, we have also uh, uh, talked about uh, the applications in uh, medicines and one important area of organometallic applications is uh, these uh, radio pharmaceuticals. Uh, uh, so, organometallic compounds 
are used for radio pharmaceutical. This field is uh, uh, highly technical and is uh, developing fast uh, with uh, various technology like uh, positron emission uh, tomography or single photon emission uh, computed tomography and so on and so forth uh, uh, are uh, taking the front seat. Uh, so, uh, the ergonometric connection is about uh, 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 the use of uh, uh, radio ergonometric compounds uh, for detection and imaging uh, purpose uh, for this and in this compound some common radioisotopes are shown over here uh, uh, whose uh, ergonometric compounds are often used. Uh, and technetium is one such uh, important radioisotope and the compound which uh, uh, has uh, bearing for our discussion at this moment is this uh, isonitrile uh, complex uh, of technetiums uh, uh, which are uh, used for uh, radio uh, pharmaceutical uh, purpose. Uh, and this is marketed by DuPont uh, with a trade name called Cardio uh, Light. Uh, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, e, uh, used to detect uh, uh, detect coronary artery disease. Uh, um, uh, so, heart disease and uh, stuff uh, has a uh, application from ergonometric compound of technetium. So, uh, with this uh, uh, we uh, come to uh, the end of our uh, uh, sort of uh, coverage for the bioergonometric uh, uh, chemistry. So, applications of ergonometric chemistry in biology and let me just summarize that we have started off uh, by looking at the field of bioergonometric chemistry seen uh, how the field has evolved uh, in various directions from uh, the presence of bioergonometric compound in biological nature uh, to the use of uh, bioergonometric compounds for medicinal purpose uh, by imaging, detection, so on and so forth. Uh, and then uh, we have started our discussion uh, by looking at this uh, vitamin uh, B12, uh, methylcobalamin and coenzyme B. Then we have looked into this nickel uh, enzyme, uh, nickel cofactor uh, for MCR uh, activity and then looked into uh, uh, the organometallic compounds of arsenic and uh, which are used for uh, arsenic and mercury uh, which are used for therapeutic purpose and then uh, we have also looked into the technetium compounds for radio uh, 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 imaging uh, uh, purpose. So, with this uh, uh, we come to the uh, conclusion of our discussion on bioergonometric chemistry and now uh, I am going to summarize uh, what has been taught uh, the topics that have been covered in this uh, uh, 60 lecture in this course of transition metal organometallics in catalysis and biology. So, uh, uh, we started off uh, uh, in the beginning with uh, Rapi synthesis, uh, uh, Rapi synthesis uh, followed by uh, Rapi synthesis followed by uh, types of uh, Rapi reactions particularly a, a, a metallative and conventional Rapi. The, the Rapi chemistry sort of revolves uh, around the utility of acetylene uh, uh, which are obtained uh, for the coal. So, uh, this is sort of like expansion of uh, 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 the coal chemistry or chemistry derived uh, from the coal to other uh, various uh, function uh, compounds uh, bearing functional groups. So, to make value added chemicals out of the source obtained from uh, coal. Uh, coal. And then uh, these are of uh, these processes are of tremendous industrial importance and mainly have been worked out by Rapi while he was there at BASF. Uh -huh. Then uh, we have looked into another interesting uh, uh, reaction which is uh, metathesis, uh, uh, olefin metathesis reactions. We have looked into their origin as well as mechanistic ap aspects and we had also noted that uh, metal carbene are the important catalytic intermediates which uh, carry out this uh, catalysis and in that context we have looked into types of carbenes. We have also looked into, uh, we have also uh, discussed that this metathesis is not a singular reaction, but actually engulfs a family of uh, reactions and we have uh, looked into various types of metathesis reactions that have been reported uh, uh, for olefins uh, and their classifications in the topic of types of metathesis reactions. Uh, we have also seen that how uh, the knowledge of metathesis reaction gets translated in uh, alkyne metathesis 
uh, and uh, made a uh, uh, parallel completion of uh, the reactivity of alkyne metathesis uh, with the from the context of alkene metathesis. And what we have noted that in alkyne metathesis the uh, active species again is a metal carbene species uh, which carry out uh, the alkyne uh, metathesis reactions. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, further discussed about the catalyst development aspects of uh, olefin metathesis. Uh, uh, olefin metathesis, uh, we have looked into some special applications uh, with regard to cross metathesis. Uh, now cross metathesis, uh, the, uh, these reactions are thermoneutral reactions and then uh, there are conditions required uh, uh, with regard to uh, driving the reaction forward. Many times it is uh, 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 the evolution of a, a small molecule uh, olefin for example ethylene. Uh, which are formed as a part of cross metathesis that leads to the forward uh, development of the reaction. Uh, we have uh, looked into uh, ring opening metathesis, uh, uh, the ver version of ring closing metathesis. Uh, um, we have also uh, looked into alkyne, alkene metathesis as a part of it. Uh, then uh, there is this uh, ring closing alkyne alkene metathesis which in short is called enine uh, metathesis we have looked into this. After the metathesis we looked into another big uh, reactions which are uh, oligomerizations of alkenes and alkynes. In this uh, we have looked into shop uh, catalysis which is a shell higher olefin polymerization uh, catalysis. Uh, now we have seen uh, that, that how the shop uh, uh, development of the shop catalyst was uh, an industrial uh, problem uh, uh, the which uh, got uh, developed uh, uh, to uh, 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 develop to uh, for a uh, practical need, uh, need based development and that was really uh, three different reactions which in involve olefin oligomerization, uh, olefin metathesis as well as isomerization reactions, three important organometallic reactions being uh, uh, put together uh, for a, a singular goal uh, of making uh, some feedstock for detergent uh, when uh, in form uh, of shop catalyst. Uh, we have also seen uh, the development of evolution of Ziegler uh, olefin polymerization uh, that started uh, with uh, the heterogeneous ziegler natta system. Uh, we have also looked at the uh, classification of uh, uh, these polyethylenes uh, uh, in terms of uh, their texture, their properties, their hardness and their softness. Uh, uh, so that is a very important criteria and then uh, these properties were uh, uh, ranging from uh, high density poly HDP, uh, then linear polyethylenes, uh, then branched polyethylenes and each of these uh, 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 structural uh, changes would give uh, different uh, attributes to the overall polymer properties and there are catalysts which could exclusively uh, uh, synthesize uh, these uh, uh, type of polymer and uh, we have looked into the development of uh, uh, our uh, catalyst from the basis of organometallic reasoning and organometallic logic uh, that led uh, to the uh, uh, direct achieve, uh, uh, achievement of these individual polymer properties. Uh, we have uh, looked into in this context we have looked into classification of polyethylenes. Also uh, this, uh, this we have looked into mechanism uh, uh, by which these polymers are formed uh, like step growth and the chain growth. Uh, how does the molecular weight vary uh, as, a, uh, as one changes the polymerization method from step growth to chain growth. Uh, mechanisms. Uh, uh, we have also uh, looked at uh, 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 this ethylene uh, polymerization, polyethylene, uh, the heterogeneous catalysis uh, which is this uh, ziegler natta uh, 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 which is uh, this uh, 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 ziegler natta uh, catalyst. ziegler natta catalyst is titanium uh, tetrachloride uh, Ti. Uh, I, I, uh, Cl4 diethyl aluminum uh, uh, chloride uh, which is this uh, system. We have lo looked into how this uh, 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 ziegler natta system can be uh, moved over from ethylene uh, to uh, propylenes. We have looked into various classifications of propylene depending on the orientation of the uh, 
uh, methyl groups uh, which sort of leads to the uh, uh, tacticity, uh, tacticity of propylenes, isotactic, atactic, syndiotactic. Uh, we have looked into the fallouts of the uh, 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 properties as a result of the toxicity. Uh, we have also seen uh, how uh, the catalyst uh, uh, can be changed uh, geared towards preparing polypropylenes of particular tacticity. So, tacticity is the important term which we had covered and the uh, importance of tax tacticity and uh, for subsequent exploitation, uh, the importance of his exploitation was rightfully a, a realized by Nata uh, uh, and uh, 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 he singularly uh, developed uh, this poly field of polypropylene with Ziegler Nata uh, systems. Uh, uh, post that uh, we have also looked into copolymerization. Now, copolymerization can uh, 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 that we have looked at are of two types, uh, particularly uh, uh, the um, copolymerization between olefins and alpha olefins. There are two types of monomer. Or, uh, and also we have looked into the copolymerization of ethylene with uh, uh, olefins with functional groups. Uh, now, there are a lot of challenges in this area which we have discussed particularly uh, one is that of selectivity because uh, uh, the rates of homopolymerizations of uh, uh, individual olefins are different as well as the functional group on the olefins uh, tend to uh, uh, poison uh, the catalyst uh, uh, that are used for polymerization. So, there are uh, issues of selectivity as well as catalyst uh, poisoning which surface up uh, 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 acutely uh, while designing catalysts for uh, such systems. And we had also observed that how organometallic chemistry uh, plays a, a big role uh, in solving the problem. What we had seen that this uh, the problem uh, the, the problem of uh, differential reactivity of olefins uh, versus alpha olefins were more acute for heterogeneous Ziegler system. However, uh, for uh, 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 metallocene based homogeneous system this uh, acti uh, act differential activity of olefins and alpha olefins uh, uh, were not that acute and hence uh, uh, the, de the catalyst development uh, moved from multi site heterogeneous uh, Ziegler Nata systems to more well behaved uh, and controlled uh, metallocene homogeneous system single site system. Uh, uh, and they were much effective for copolymerization of olefins as well as uh, for uh, copolymerization of olefins bearing uh, polar functional uh, monomer. Now, in this uh, case another uh, point uh, to note is that uh, 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 these uh, on developing catalyst for copolymerization uh, uh, with functional group bearing monomer, uh, the one uh, then moves on uh, from early transition metal to that of the uh, uh, late transition metal which are more electron rich and hence uh, they do not uh, get poisoned by the presence of functional group as uh, to the extent that an early transition metal uh, would do. So, uh, we have looked in great detail uh, the de catalyst development in the copolymerization of olefins. And now, uh, moving beyond uh, we have looked into uh, the catalyst used for polycycloolefins, synthesis of polycycloolefins. We have looked uh, into two methods uh, which were used uh, for polycycloolefins. And then the first method uh, to which was just addition polymerization, uh, what we had observed that the catalyst was chosen as such that uh, the metathesis reaction were suppressed and only the polymerization where uh, uh, reaction uh, was utilized. And in the second approach what we had seen, we had seen uh, that addition reaction uh, using intermolecular and intramolecular uh, alternate uh, polymerization uh, occurred that result uh, in the formation of desired polycyclo olefins that too oh, oh, in a highly selective fashion giving a particular uh, a type of stereo uh, chemistry. Uh, another important thing uh, uh, while we discuss the Ziegler Nata polymerization is uh, uh, that with the advent of Ziegler Nata polymerization the focus of catalyst development had been mainly on group 2 metals as the group 2 metals uh, had been the one which was extremely uh, good for carrying out olefin and alkyne polymerization. However, uh, uh, when the field evolved to uh, develop catalyst for copolymerization uh, uh, bearing polar functional monomers the requirement shifted and the focus also shifted to uh, producing catalyst from uh, uh, non group 4 or, or early transition metal. Uh, catalyst for polymerization. In this regard, uh, we have looked into uh, uh, lanthanide systems for uh, uh, as well as which 
uh, for, for polymerization as well as uh, nickel and palladium which are late transition metal for olefin polymerization. Uh, in this context, uh, uh, we have uh, looked into uh, uh, iron, nickel, palladium uh, uh, for the polymerization. Uh, after that, uh, we moved into the bioorganometallic aspects of uh, uh, this course where we looked into utility of uh, bioorganometallics in biology. And in the beginning, we noted the development of the field of bioorganometallics, uh, which is a highly evolving field. Uh, however, given the fact that it is uh, only emerging, still it had made its foot, uh, footprint in several areas uh, ranging from imaging, uh, radiotherapy applications to uh, uh, sensing and so on and so forth. And we started off with the, uh, uh, the naturally occurring bioorganometallic compound by looking into vitamin B12, particularly methyl cobalamin and coenzyme B12, uh, B12 which does contain a uh, metal carbon bond uh, in the nature. Now, this is counterintuitive and uh, very interesting given the fact that organometallic uh, uh, compounds are extremely moisture sensitive and water sensitive. And here we have a biology occurring organometallic compound in form of methyl cobalamin and uh, coenzyme B12, which carry out uh, vital uh, 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 functions in biology. We have also looked into another interesting compound called methyl coenzyme uh, M reductase, uh, which uh, with its nickel uh, uh, cofactor uh, uh, prosthetic group uh, 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 goes through an active species, species containing a nickel methyl bond formation, uh, which results in methane production. Uh, we have looked into the utility of various metal ions in biology as well as medicinal property of uh, uh, by uh, organometallic compounds. So, this is how uh, we have spread uh, uh, the topic uh, 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 according to uh, their utility in catalysis and biology. And with this, uh, we come to the end of the conclusion of today's uh, lecture as well as uh, the conclusion of uh, 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 this uh, course. Uh, I must really acknowledge uh, my heartfelt thanks for uh, the teaching assistants, uh, both of them are uh, graduate students here at IIT Bombay, Ms. Shreta De and Ms. Uh, Shalini Tripathi, both are extremely uh, diligent, hardworking uh, graduate students uh, who had uh, helped me tremendously in preparing the material for this course and uh, uh, they had uh, uh, been of great assistance. I must also acknowledge the whole of NPTEL studio team, uh, they had been extremely a, a diligent, hardworking uh, and supportive uh, uh, in uh, getting uh, this recording done. I must start with Mr. Amin Sheikh, Mr. Tutsar Daspande, Mr. Vijay uh, Kadare, Mr. Devendra Parab and Mr. Ravi Paswan. So, uh, with this uh, I thank uh, everybody involved uh, directly or indirectly with the course. I also thank you uh, for uh, 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 taking this course and for being with me uh, uh, in all through the 60 lectures. I hope this uh, course uh, really helps you uh, in getting a, a better perspective of organometallic chemistry. Remember in the beginning I had said that this is an important area where about 9 Nobel prizes have been uh, conferred in a, a span of 120 years of history of Nobel Prize. So, that sort of highlights how important is organometallic chemistry in today's world. So, with this again I uh, once again I thank you uh, for uh, being with me in this course and uh, uh, I hope you had a productive time uh, 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 in uh, taking this course uh, with uh, best wishes and good luck for your future endeavor. I conclude here. Thank you. Thank you.